Hi everyone, Alexa here from the blog, theduvalhomestead.com, where I write about farm to table recipes and homemade natural living. And today I'm gonna to share with you how to make sourdough English muffins with einkorn flour. muffins are a breakfast staple. We've been making them a lot recently just because it's nice to change it up from having toast all the time to an English muffin. English muffins are a little bit thicker than like a biscuit and they're kind of airy on the inside and moist when you open them up. Excellent with butter and honey and I'll show you how to make a honey butter which is really simple and that's our favorite topping. But one thing I really like about these that might surprise you is that they're really easy to keep in the fridge which is great for us because we can make a lot of them and then store them in the fridge and then eat them for the next few days. You can pull them out for a snack and have peanut butter and jelly with them or I've even put some turkey and cold cuts on there for a sandwich. I like to try to make these long fermented, which means I like to feed my starter in the morning one day, let it eat away all day, and then it'll be ready to start the dough that night and then we'll make them the next morning. So if you have time to let this sit, overnight that's better that way it gives it more of that sour flavor and it's a lot better for your health it's more gut healthy it's got more of those probiotics in it because it's an active dough at that point point. and then secondly we are going to be using einkorn flour with this and that is just because einkorn flour is a non-hybridized grain it's much healthier for you than the standard grain flour that you buy from the store because of the process that has gone through before it gets to your door. I'm gonna give a brief history of einkorn and a little science lesson of why it's much better to eat einkorn flour than another modern flour. Part of how I learn how to make new recipes for you all is I read books like this one. And I'm gonna read a quick paragraph from it so you can learn as well. Einkorn also has 50% more manganese, riboflavin, and zinc, and 20% more magnesium, diamond, niacin, iron, and vitamin B, all essential nutrients. Ironically, these are the same nutrients that are synthetically added back to enriched wheat flour to compensate for what we've lost by making wheat a high yield crop. All wheat is a descendant of wild einkorn, and yet einkorn remains the original wheat. It's the only wheat that has never been hybridized. Hybridization is the crossing of distinctly different species of plants to form a new variety with a new gen genetic makeup. Plant breeding is the science of crossing similar species of plants for what is believed to be improved traits like higher yields or ease of growing. During the Bronze Age, einkorn was slowly abandoned by farmers for higher yielding varieties. Breeders created new high yielding varieties of wheat with hybrid seeds that would carry better traits for large scale farming. Genes are mutated to drastically reduce the height of the plants so that bending in the wind and rain would not ruin the crops. Breeding transformed emmer into today's modern durum wheat and spell into today's soft bread wheat, yet einkorn was only wheat to remain completely untouched. Einkorn's fall in popularity is actually its saving grace because it survived as a relic grain. Its seeds were not selectively harvested or bred for improvements and it has remained as it was just as nature intended. Einkorn contains roughly 30% more protein than modern wheat and more protein than any other grain while having 15% less starch translating to fewer carbohydrates. This increase in protein will leave you feeling more sustained after you eat einkorn. If you were to eat just crackers that are the modern wheat hybridized crackers that contain very low amounts of protein, you're likely to feel a blood sugar crash in a couple of hours because there was nothing that went into your bloodstream that can sustain you with those crackers. If you eat something like an einkorn cracker, there's higher levels of protein in that, kind of like if you have toast with eggs on the side. So you'll be able to last a lot longer that protein is in your bloodstream, making it a better flour. So with that said, we're gonna get started making the English muffins now. So for this recipe, we're going to use einkorn flour, honey as our natural sweetener, salt, water and sourdough starter to get us started. So you're gonna start with three quarter cup of fed active sourdough starter. Now how you know your starter is ready is that it will be bubbly and really light and fluffy. So when you kind of shake the bowl, it moves really easily. You don't have to shake it very hard to move it. You can see bubbles in it. And you can even do what's called a float test, which is where you stick a spoonful of sourdough starter in a cup of water and see if it floats. Does. So if it sinks to the bottom, it's not ready yet. You need to let it sit longer or feed it again. Now this is really only important if you're making bread. I think for English muffins, again, if you don't get the best rise, it's really not gonna matter. They're still gonna be delicious. So I really wouldn't worry about that. But when people ever ask, when do I know my sourdough starter is ready for baking? I always tell them to do the float test. So 
this is definitely ready. And the other thing that I get asked a lot is what hydration level should their sourdough starter be before making a dough like this. And I always say about 75%, which is 75% water to flour ratio. So what that ends up being is when you feed your starter, you feed it one cup of flour and three quarter cup of water, as opposed to like 100% hydration, which is equal parts flour and water. This would be 75%. And this is what I normally do. Now, that's not to say sometimes I add more water if it's looking a little too thick, but generally I do about 75%. And I will leave a link below to how to make your own sourdough starter at home. If you've never done it before, you just need flour and water and it's really foolproof. It's very hard to mess up. You really can't kill a sourdough starter. Anyone can do it. So I'll leave a link below to how to do that. And that's just what I feed mine. Now I want to caveat by saying that whatever flour you're using, whatever your air is like, the temperature in your house, the water quality, all matters when it comes to making sourdough products and so your dough might look a little different than mine so you do have to learn to use common sense and figure out how to handle your sourdough starter which just takes time so sometimes measuring things exactly even if you have a food scale and you're using grams it just doesn't always come out perfectly because you have to get to know your flour and your environment but eventually you will figure it out that's for sure then i'm going to add about a cup of water filtered water and one and a half teaspoons of salt and two tablespoons of raw honey. This is the natural sweetener that we're adding. And then you're just gonna mix all those ingredients together with a fork. Just the sourdough starter, the water, honey, and salt, that's it. This is really easy and a great breakfast. Then you're going to add three cups of einkorn flour. I use the Jovial Einkorn Flour. You can get this on Amazon or I have it at my grocery store. It's the all-purpose one. It's not whole wheat, it's all-purpose. But again, these are so simple that you could really use any flour you like. Okay, now is the fun part. We're going to mix this together with our hands. And since the liquidy part's on the bottom, the flour's on top, I'm just going to reach my fingers in on the side here. I'm gonna pull underneath, pull it up, and open it. And that's how I'm gonna get everything mixed. I read also in a book one time that you should be careful not to overmix einkorn flour and that kneading it by hand or mixing it by hand is always best. It's gonna be very sticky. And in general, I would say you want it on the wetter side as opposed to the drier side. Come together. And now I'm just going to cover this and I will return to it tomorrow morning. Okay, good morning. We are gonna make these einkorn English muffins for breakfast this morning. But first, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Before I put the coffee in the mug, I put hot water in it. This warms up the mug, which allows the coffee to stay warm longer because otherwise you pour the coffee in and it loses heat by warming up the mug first. So I bet you didn't know when you watched this video, you were going to get some coffee tips. So this is the perfect meal you can make with eggs or so many different things, bacon. I love making these English muffins, and like I said earlier, they really store well for a few days. You can also freeze them. But anyway, let me show you what the dough looks like. So as you can tell, the dough has grown quite a bit. It probably has grown a couple of inches. <clears throat> it's nice and thick. It doesn't pour out, it's not runny. And it's got bubbles on it as well. Okay, so this is the fun part. So we need to add one teaspoon of baking soda. And the dough is pretty thick, so I'm actually just gonna use my hands to mix it. Mix the baking soda in. And the dough should be thick enough so that you can actually pick it up. Very sticky. Typical of einkorn dough to be very sticky. 
Now before we do that, we're going to preheat two cast iron pans. This is very important that you get these hot before you put the English muffins on them. Heat them on high and later we're gonna turn them down. Okay, see how this pan is smoking here? I'm gonna turn this off, that's how I know it's getting too hot. And I'm gonna put a little bit of coconut oil into each pan to help season it and help the English muffins not stick. So these are nice and hot. Sometimes when I make this, the dough is a little bit thicker, thick enough to actually roll out with a rolling pin. I could add some flour to this and make this thick enough to do that as well. To be quick here, I'm just gonna throw these right on the cast iron, so I'm gonna show you that method. But just know that if you want a really perfectly circ circular English muffin, you could roll this out on the counter and use the top of a mason jar to use like a cookie cutter almost and go from there. I'm just gonna grab an amount nice and thick. So I turn the heat on low now for both of these burners. Now this step is optional, but I recommend it. I'm going to put a lid over both my cast irons. This helps the English muffins cook in the middle, kind of on all sides, instead of just getting burnt on either side. So I'm gonna let these cook for about five or so minutes, and then we're gonna check them and see if they're ready to be flipped. Now we're going to make honey butter while these are cooking. So you're just gonna take your butter, however much you think you're going to need, or you can even make some more and like put it in the fridge and save it for the next day. And then honey. Always wanna get that local raw honey. So good for you. All of the properties from the local flowers and the local bees. We try to incorporate this in our diets as much as possible. Probably two tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of honey. I don't really usually measure this. I just kind of eyeball it. And then this is going to get a little messy, but you just kind of smush it all together. What's cooking if it's not messy? <laughs> and you have yourself a nice honey butter. And this is gonna be so good when you go to put it on the English muffins. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check on my English muffins now. They smell like they are cooking a lot and maybe they smell like they're burning actually. Okay, so what we wanna do is just lift these up and check the bottom. And you can see that they're clearly ready to be flipped. And they're nice and fluffy. Probably could have flipped these a little bit earlier. And then I'm gonna put the lid back on and we are actually off. My heat is off on both of these because it's super hot and we just don't need it anymore. Now if you find that the inside is not cooked, you can also put these in the oven. Just let them sit at maybe 300 degrees and the inside will cook just fine. However, I don't normally have to do that. I think I've only done it maybe once. So I'm kind of just continually turning the burner on and off. I'm turning it back on to low right now because I wanna make sure that they finish cooking. But you just have to kind of manage your burners. All right, these look just about done to me. I love this golden brown color. And you can always cut one open to see if it's ready on the inside. But I'm thinking that these are. Here's what they look like when they're done. All right, well, I really enjoyed making these sourdough English muffins with you with einkorn flour. If you make this recipe and you enjoy them, I would really appreciate if you gave it a five-star review on the blog. It helps Google see that people are liking the recipes and then show it to more people. If you are brand new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Every week I do a new farm to table recipe or homemade natural living here on YouTube and also on the blog. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.